All right, so uh, what we're going to do is play around with a transform, which is really how to move and rotate something, um, and just some basic scripts with that, okay? So what I'm going to show you is what we've got so far. We've got uh, this ball right here that I called the player. It's got a rigid body, so that's why it fell. It's got a collider, so it bumped into this ground that also has a collider. And if we go into the scene view, whoa. We are zoom. Let's press the F and that'll just focus right on as long as I'm hovering over the scene. So I'm going to zoom in really quick. So if I click on the ground, you can see that light green little um, box collider there. If I click on the player, you can see it's green collider right there. And the rigid body is the physics. All right. And as long as I'm in play mode here, uh, we added a little player controller script here that just if I press right, will add a force to the right. And if I press left, it'll add a force to the left. So that way I'm able to move my ball around. Now what I want to show you is we can move things in the scene without physics. Uh, we can just directly change this transform. So what I'm going to do is really quickly show you two different ways to do that. So one way is to use the parent-children relationship over here in the scene. I can take the main camera and say, I really want it to follow this ball. So I can make it a child of the player. And now as I press play, it's going to follow that. And the reason is, is I can, on my camera, I can say, you know what, let's reset this. I don't want this all at negative, negative. Um, when I do that, it's going to muck up what I see. And the reason is, is I set it to be exactly inside the ball. Now, this is a camera. And if it's inside the ball pointing out away from it, it doesn't see anything. So I'm going to change its Z back to negative 10. Okay, but we're centering it at 0, 0, X and Y in this 2D game on the ball. And now if I watch as I hit play mode, the main camera here, its position is never changing, whether or not I move the ball and oh my gosh, what is happening? But it still says it's staying at zero, zero. The reason is, is when you put a game object as a child of another, these are now local coordinates in terms of the parent. This is incredibly hand, handy for, um, let's say, making a body out of arms and legs. You don't want to have to tell every single part how to move through space. <clears throat> Instead, you tell the main body how to move. And then relative to that, you say, hey, arm, just swing back and forth. Wherever the body is in space, just move your arm back and forth. Even if it turns upside down, you just turn right upside down with it and you just keep swinging. Okay, so this parent-child relationship is incredibly useful for grouping items together or following or keeping the rotations the same. So notice again, as I press play, this rotation and position relative to the parent does not change even though I'm rotating, moving through space. Okay, but ugh, obviously that would just make me dizzy there. So what I'm going to do is on my player, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to say instead I want to tell my camera to follow the player's position, but with script, with code, with a few lines rather than that parent-child relationship. Okay, and there's other things we could do. I mean, we do want this ball to roll because it's a ball, but you could also under constraints for rigid body freeze the rotation. So when you press play um, and I move it to the right, now it will slide rather than roll. So if my main camera was a child, now it would follow it and not roll. And so that's really useful in 2D games with like something like a player that you obviously don't want your player to be doing cartwheels along the floor. So this would be an easy way for the camera to follow the player. Um, but instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to remove that constraint. So now just clicking play mode. Now my ball can roll again because the rigid body can rotate. All right, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make a new script. So down here in my assets folder, I go to the scripts and I am going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this my camera controller. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit enter or double click on that to open this up. And so it's blank right now. Now, the way in which you can affect the transform of this, since the transform is the only thing, if I create a new blank game object, the only thing it has is a transform. Every single game object is going to have that. And so what I'm going to do is in here just directly refer to it. With any other component, a collider, a rigid body, anything like that, I would have to use um, either a public variable, like public, um, maybe a whole nother game object, 
or a public rigid body 2D, and then I would have to refer to it in the scene. Or really commonly what you can do is you can use the get component of type, and that's a way to grab something from the game object you're referring to. So those are really useful. However, because a transform is on every game object in the game, you can directly refer to it. So every single frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say transform dot position. And I'm going to say plus equals. So I'm going to add to my position every single time. And let's do uh, let's just do vector two dot right. OK, so every frame it will add a one zero vector. Remember, um, the vector two dot right is just the vector zero one comma zero, right? One for X and zero for Y. So think about that though. I mean, there's maybe what, 60 frames a second and we're gonna go over one, you know, uh, world position point every frame. So we're gonna move 60 per single second and so that seems really quick it'll probably just if i save this and go back to uh, my game and i put the camera controller on my main camera i imagine it's just going to shoot to the right um oh and we have a little error uh let's see what the error was okay sorry i paused it for a second <clears throat> so the error was when i added a vector two to the right that was ambiguous because this position here um you can refer to it in terms of uh just two-dimensional x and y but in general transform.position always has the x y and the z so it didn't know in what way i was referring to it so i'm going to talk about vector three dot right just so i have a full x y and z still the same right vector just add one to the x and then keep the y and the z the same so i change that i'm going to save it and we're going to go back over here again it's already on my camera so when i go to my camera it's got this camera control right here so i'm going to click play and we'll see what happens and shoom, the camera shoots off to the right. Again, I can go to the scene view and I can say, where the heck did that camera go? I click on this, I click F and whoa, I'm way over here at 500. Notice the Y and the Z aren't changing. Okay, so I'm gonna exit play mode really quick. I'm gonna go back to my script and let's change this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a public and then I'm gonna refer to another game object in the scene, okay? I wanna refer to the player. Now you could directly refer to the player's transform. I always find it easier to uh, refer to the game object and then navigate from there. So I'm gonna set that up. I'm gonna save this. Okay, and now as I go back to Unity, what you'll see is when I click on my main camera, there's now a game object called player that I can refer to. So what I'm gonna do, and this time, since it's in the scene, I'm gonna show you, I can just, while selecting on camera, so that's visible, I can click on the player and literally just drag it in there. So I'm saying I'm referring to this game object, the object called player in the scene. Now what I can do is now that I'm referencing that, I can just say transform.position, which means the transform of the game object using this script, this is my camera controller. It's attached to my camera. So when I say transform.position, I mean my own or the camera's position. And I'm going to just always set it equal to. And I'm able to refer to the player now because I made a public variable and linked it. So I can say, oh, from the player, I want to get its transform.position. And so now what I'm doing is every single frame, I'm grabbing the player's position and I'm saying my own, the cameras, because this is the camera controller, my own position should be equal to the player's position. So now what you'll see is, and, and again, since I'm only referencing the position here, this isn't going to change the rotation. It's not going to change anything else. Okay. Um, you'll see there's going to be an issue with this. So let's set this um, going. And as soon as we click play here, Oh my gosh, what the heck? And so let's click on the camera. And again, look at this. We've got um, this position of zero. So dang, we don't want that. Okay, so what we can do is we can say, you know what? I don't want to set it to the entire position. I want to set it to just have some X's and Y's, but I, I want to be able to choose the own Z. Okay, so from position, we can always do control shift and the single quote, and it will come up with um, information or documentation about the position. I don't want to do that right now, but what I want to show you is I'm going to say 
the camera's position every single frame is equal to a new vector three. Okay, I'm creating a new object of the ve vector three class and the constructor will take in the three parameters. So I could say a new vector three and maybe I want it to always be equal to one, one, zero. Okay, that's, that's not true, but I'm just showing you I could do that. So what I want is I want to leave the Z at negative 10. Okay, and I only want to update the X and the Y. So what I can do is I can say, I always want the camera's X to be the same as the position of the player. So I would go player dot transform dot position. Now that's the entire position and then dot just the X part. Okay, and then similarly, I'm going to say, okay, I want to set the Y position to be from the player. I want to get the position and just the Y part. And so now what I'm saying is set my position to always be a new vector three where I take the player's X position, the player's Y position, but I choose. I want the Z to always be negative 10. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my game here. And now we should have a camera locked onto the position of the ball but that doesn't rotate and the ball can go. Now you notice the center of the ball is going up and down a little bit. So we have the camera moving up and down. Um, we could adjust that with some dampening, but that's for another lesson, okay? So that's what we could do. If we wanted to, we could do something like, let's take this other um, ball, what did I call it? Oh, other player. And I'm gonna just add one more script. I'm just gonna play around with the transform really quick. Okay, so let's add a new script called um, beach ball controller all right and so notice i just typed it there i said oh this must be a new script because there was nothing of that name and you go yeah it was a new script so let's create now that let's go back to my project and you'll see um, it showed up in the main level of assets so i'm going to take that script and i'm going to drop it into my scripts folder that doesn't change the linkage it's still fine it's a component on here now i could either double click on it in here or just go straight to the other player and I can click on my beach ball and say I want to edit this script. Either way, it's going to pop up in my mono develop. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to animate back and forth. OK, so I'm going to set this to have a public float, which is going to be called move speed. OK, I don't know what that value is. We'll play around with it in play mode. And then every single frame, I want it to go back and forth. OK, so we've got a couple different ways we could do that. Um, we could do something like where we um, add a positive one or negative one, depending on whether we want it to go left and right. We could use like a, the sign of some sort of like timer. And that way, um, you know, it would cycle forwards and backwards. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the simple adding. OK, um, I personally I love the trig and that's what I use in general. But I'm just going to do the adding. OK, so we want to take the transform dot position of this ball and we want to add to it. So what I'm thinking is we're going to go plus equals. So we're going to add to it vector three dot right. OK, so again, that adds nonstop to the side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private um, int called direction. OK, and I'm going to set that direction to be positive one first. Since it's private, it won't show up in Unity. So I can I save to this and I go back over here. The beach ball script will now have a public move speed that will show up. And I don't know. Let's start at a 10. I don't know. Um, then let's go back here so we've got this in direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say always let's set um, to be adding the right direction times this direction. So if direction is positive one, we're adding right. And if direction is negative one, we're adding right times negative one, which is left. OK, so again, now this would move really fast one direction and never switch. So all I'm going to do is say, um, I don't know. Let's let's take our game object in the scene and kind of just move it around a little bit. So let's go. Let's see. I don't know my game object here. And I'm taking the moving tool up here in the left. So slide this and say I want it to go to about. Oh, that's a position of about eight. I could also just up here in the transfer, grab this and say so that's eight. And then it's at um, about negative nine. So let's maybe go like 10 to negative 10. It'll go out of this scene a little bit. OK, so I'm going to say if the transform dot position dot x of this you know object which this is on the beach ball ever gets greater than 10 
okay? Or if the transform dot position, well, let's just do it one at a time for now, okay? So if it ever gets bigger than that, then what we can do, and you don't need brackets if it's a one line, or you could use brackets, I'm gonna say let's just set the direction equal to negative one. Okay, so now I'm gonna be adding the left direction because I went too far to the right. And then I'm gonna say if the transform dot position dot x is ever less than negative 10, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set the direction equal to positive one. Okay, you obviously you don't need the positive, I just put it there for clarity. Okay, so that's gonna move really fast to the right and then really fast to the left. If I wanna slow this down, what I can do is I can just multiply this by my move speed. I'm gonna save this, all right? I'm actually gonna remove that plus, and let's go back in here and let's click play. Um, it does not exist. Hold on one second, let's see why. Hold on. Ah, that's why. I misspelled it. <laughs> it took me a second. So this was trath, trasn form. So transform. There we go. Now let's try it again. Okay. So. And now you can see it's moving so fast when you barely see it. And then the camera zoomed in so much. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this back just a little bit. Um, whoop. So there we go. Okay. And now let's go in here and change the move speed. So on the other player, let's change the move speed to be one. Okay, and let's try this again. There we go, it's moving. And while it's in play mode, you could always grab this and it's a float. So we can go and you could slow it down as much as you want. And wow, it's just absolutely fantastic. <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to show you that. So. Uh, Again, you can make some public variables that you can adjust in Unity. Uh, you can make some private ones that you can deal with just inside the class. And then you can directly affect the position. If you want to make a new vector 3, you simply say new vector 3. Woo, fun bell. New vector 3, and then you put in whatever float or int values you want in there. And then you can use it as you see fit. All right, great video.